get, 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 get. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Hey guys, it's Robert Janae with Shutterstock Tutorials, and today we're back with another gear review. Today we're going to be talking about what I like to call the sniper lens. This is the Lawa 24mm probe lens, and it's one of the wildest lenses that I've ever seen. And today we're going to do a deep dive into all the specs, features, we're going to do some product shots and different kinds of tests with it. We're also going to answer some questions like how practical is it, is it worth the money, and why on earth would you buy this lens? Well, let's find out! So here it is, the Lawa 24mm probe lens, uh, f14 through f40. It is by and by far the weirdest lens that I've ever gotten my hands on. Venus Optics Lawa is known for their experimental niche lenses like their ultra wides and their macro zoom lenses, but this one by far I think is th the funkiest. This lens is only one pound, which is actually pretty light compared to other lenses that are, you know, as long as this, like the Canon telephotos or something like that, that, you know, have a lot of weight to them. So this thing is easy to hold in your hands, you know, move around. It's it's pretty lightweight. It's 16 inches in length and it's a 24 millimeter lens. To me, that shouldn't make sense uh, how it's a wide lens, but there's actually 27 glass elements within the tube of this lens that is able to uh, bend light in a way to achieve that wide macro. Now other macro lenses are usually gonna be a lot more telephoto. You're gonna be from 60 to 100 millimeter, uh, so you can get that really shallow depth, like very, very shallow depth of field. But this one is able to get you really up close to a subject while still providing information in your background. That's why I think it's so handy for it to be a 24 millimeter. It's so wildly different than any other type of macro lens out there that you get way wilder shots than you would ever get with a regular macro lens. One thing that I really, really like about this lens is that the minimum focus distance of the lens is actually at the tip of the lens. Most cameras, their minimum focus distance is gonna be about, you know, six inches to a foot to maybe even five feet when you get into more telephoto. But with this lens, you can stick something right up to the tip and it will still be in focus. Now the aperture of this lens is actually f14 through f40. Now most lenses that you'll ever get, you know, conventional lenses will be f2.8 from f4 to about f16, f20. This one is leagues above anything else you'll find, but it's for good reason. If your aperture was any wider, it'd be really hard to get a crisp focus uh, because your depth of field would be so, so incredibly shallow. The aperture is also unclicked, so you don't have to worry about, you know, clicking to different settings. You can just fine tune the area of uh, your aperture's openness needs to be at. But with the aperture being that closed, you know, at its most open setting, you're gonna need a lot of light to get a really good shot on this lens. It's very, very, very dark if you're shooting in just normal circumstances, so you got really gotta brighten up your area of shooting uh, to get a clear shot. But if you don't have that, there's some little feature on here that's really, really neat. There is an LED at the very tip of the lens. Now that thing is powered by a USB that you plug into the front of the lens, and it comes with a little dimmer switch that you can use to turn up and turn down the LED. One little gripe I have with the LED though is that the color isn't that great. Um, it's a very yellow, it's not very uh, pretty. It's kind of grimy, so I tried to avoid using it and try to get, you know, uh, my actual lights pointed towards my products. Uh, but sometimes, you know, if you're in a pinch or you're shooting in nature or you're just in like a tunnel, I like poking this into a beehive. Speaking of other weird quirks of this lens, the front of this lens from here to here is waterproof. So you can actually stick this in water and get shots underwater without ruining the lens. So the first thing that came to my mind whenever I got my hands on this lens was who was this lens made for? It seemed like such a niche lens that it was made for a specific type of person. And it's not, you know, one you bring on set just in case you, you need it. It's one of those lenses that, you know, you buy because you need it. That, <laughs> that didn't make sense. Let me rewind. You buy it because of the specific shot that it gives you. So we did a bunch of different tests of this lens and different types of scenarios and product shots and logo reveals uh, to see what it excelled at and to see the things that it kind of lacked at where you would, you know, choose a different lens to go with for that specific shot. So let's get into it. So to test out the waterproof features of this lens, I wanted to get a little bit experimental. We had some acrylic paint left over from our Premium Beat Galaxy freebie. I was curious to see what it would look like from inside the water. So I hooked up the lens to a C-stand and hung it above our fish tank. 
I put some paint into a syringe and then tried to get it as close to the lens as possible. What we captured was actually pretty amazing. The paint looked so surreal from such a close angle and the shallow depth really accented the dancing waves of the flow. It got even more psychedelic when we threw in a contrasting color. After the success of the paint adventure, I wanted to do something a little bit more practical. So I decided to do a little logo reveal with a miniature underwater set. I got some sand, poured it in the tank, and waterproofed a little logo for a mock-up production company. After setting the scene, I just swept the lens in a C-stand to perform a track-along reveal. The lens was really easy to maneuver, and I never felt uneasy about it being underwater, and it showed no signs of distress being under there. So for a waterproof lens, that's a pretty special piece of gear. So the next thing that came to mind for shooting with this lens was creating a small, you know, macro set for this lens to travel through and create some product shots. Now, as you may know, our channel recently hit 100,000 subscribers. I asked the YouTube community about what they wanted to see once we hit 100K, and we are making a whole 100K video upcoming soon, so keep your eyes open for that. But the overwhelming response was the footage of our failed videos. So before we get into the product shots of today, everyone, I'd like to present to you Trash City. Sometimes you gotta take matters into your own hands. So to redeem myself, I set out to create a small desert scene with some leftover sand and lava rocks. We had the camera on a dolly, so I created a lane for the lens to travel down. After some small set design work, we slid in the camera to capture the shot. What I love about the work this lens did is the depth that it created traveling down the track. It made the move so much more dynamic and the wide 24 millimeter angle made it seem so much larger than it appeared in real life. To compare the shot to a macro lens, we recorded the same move with a 50 millimeter lens at a wide aperture. As you can see, the 50 millimeter condenses the set while the probe lens extends it and kept the actual shape of the set pieces to true form. Since I love this shot so much, I decided to recreate one of my favorite movie scenes with a little dry ice and some rock salt. Yeah, sure, it may not be canon, but hey, we're having fun. Now, one of the most practical reasons you would use this lens is to shoot food videos. Food always looks better on a macro scale, and what better way to capture that than with this lens? This lens really took in the details of the cake and brought life into what could be a very boring shot. It somehow makes everything life-size. Like you could be walking right along the lens on the top of this delicious chocolate cake. It's also great to get up close and personal with liquid pour shots. It can capture the small little details that would otherwise be passed by and condensed by a zoom lens. Now, if you work with objects that have very small components, such as a computer, this lens is a godsend. Whenever I built my editing PC a few months ago, I would have killed to get this close to the action with a lens. It's the perfect way to showcase small sections of your product that you may need to show your audience that otherwise couldn't be captured. For example, if you need to show off a specific port of your computer that may be a half an inch in size, this thing can capture every single detail of it. I feel myself constantly admiring how dynamic this lens makes things feel. Even if you're panning just a few inches, it looks like it's traversing a very long way. So in conclusion, I really think that this lens is in a category of its own. It doesn't feel like a macro lens and it doesn't feel like a wide lens, so it's really hard to pin it down with any other type of glass. Do I think it's worth the $1,500 price point? Well, like most things I review, it depends. 
I probably wouldn't go out of my way to buy this lens if I was just a typical videographer. It's just not versatile enough in a normal environment to warrant such a large price point. But if I was shooting macro sets and product shots in my daily work, then this lens is a solid investment. It'll bring a different feel than any other type of lens, and it will make your shots way more interesting than they would be with just normal glass. So that is my take on the Lawa 24mm probe lens. You'll probably see this lens featured on some of our upcoming videos since we do a lot of product shots on our channel. Also, since they're just so fun to use, we'll probably find some more crazy uses for this guy in the future. Anyways, like, sub, share, and we'll see you in the next one.